today we decided there are two big econ topics that need to be addressed. One, the first supplementary budget of the year. And two, the LG Energy Solutions IPO. It was buzzy. A limited supply, high demand, it calls for our attention this morning. But let's take it one at a time. At this point, pandemic-induced financial difficulties are hardly seen as temporary. Small businesses in particular have been in the deep end of it for the long haul. As if to answer that very call, South Korea's National Assembly passed the first supplementary budget of the year, mostly to be used towards relief for these businesses. But it's the earliest of its kind, and that very timing raises a few red flags for a Economists. So we connect with Professor Yang jun Zog of the Catholic University of Korea for some answers. Good morning, Professor Yang. Good morning. All right, uh, let's dive right in. The supplementary budget, the earliest of its kind in peacetime, it turns out. Can you tell us what is the major criticism behind the supplementary budget and its timing? Okay, well, I think we can uh, sum it up in uh, four different points. As you mentioned, the first point is the timing. There was a lot of criticism that small businesses were not getting enough compensation in the past. And frankly, the situation was more serious in 2020 and 2021. But uh, it's uh, the uh, businesses are now getting uh, compensation. Mm. Uh, and why now? Uh, right. the, uh, that's coming up under a lot of scrutiny. And then there's a second, there's question on how the amount, 14 trillion won, was derived. Mm. And then third, there's a problem of how the supplementary budget is being financed, uh, which is dovetailing with the ability of government to estimate tax revenues. Mm. Uh, we, the, uh, it's mostly being financed through government debt and uh, the government debt has skyrocketed in the last few years. Mm. Uh, so this is an ongoing concern. Mm. And lastly, there is a question related to the, uh, the uh, third point, whether the uh, Korea's long-term government debt trajectory is sustainable. Mm. So uh, a- as you just said, there's been a lot of uh, talk about compensation in the past two years, mm. but the actual amount of compensation for the uh, small and micro businesses were fairly small and very hard to get. Right. Uh, and uh, the, uh, most of the direct compensation measures in the past uh, were directed at firms and occupations, which were hit directly by distancing measures, uh, firms which had to uh, shut down or with uh, hours being limited by distancing measures. And the amount was nowhere near the reduction in revenues or income that these businesses suffered, um, a few hundred thousand won. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... It was actually less than what a typical four-person family would get under the uh, universal relief payment. Mm. Uh, So uh, the uh, small businesses, I think, were very right to be angry about this. Mm. Uh, And then uh, since the uh, fourth quarter last year, the amount allocated for compensation suddenly just blew up. Mm. Uh, The uh, government and the politicians are now uh, just racing to provide more and more aid to small and micro businesses. Mm. It could have been much more useful in 2020 and 2021. Mm. Uh, But you can't say that better late than never. And that's a good point to make. Mm. Uh, But still, why now? Uh, Could it be uh, the election season that comes into question as well once again? Yeah. Last time we had a, a the a first uh, universal relief payment was just before the uh, regional election. Right. A lot of I won't say that that's a definite answer, but right. I think uh, there's a very good reason to uh, be suspicious. Okay. Let's put it that way. Uh, and politicians, not just from the uh, one side, but both ruling and opposition parties, are just pushing and pushing for more compensation. Mm. Uh, opposition presidential candidate uh, Yoon suk yeol has advocated 50 trillion to 100 trillion won. Mm. Uh, the uh, ruling party presidential candidate Lee Dae-myung also advocating more aid as well, uh, saying that uh, we should uh, have uh, compensation and assistance measures up to 5% of GDP, ignoring the fact that Korea's GDP actually fell only by 0.9% compared to a lot of other countries uh, whose GDP fell a lot more. Mm. Uh, And other lawmakers from both parties are uh, advocating spreading even more money around, giving uh, assistance to freelancers, cultural workers, artists, taxi drivers, and so on and so on. And before 
last uh, before the uh, election season, uh, they were actually trying to give as little money as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is a big change. Mm-hmm. And you know, as I said, better late than never, perhaps. But sure. you have to be worried about the uh, actual consequences of the spending as well as the timing. Uh, aren't they also questioning, uh, well, isn't the government's sort of, I don't want to say excuse, but explanation that they have more tax revenues? Maybe we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but as you mentioned, Professor Yang, uh, there's more concern about the timing uh, coming so early in the year. So what warning signs does the timing of the supplementary budget actually signal? Okay, well, this budget is a, uh, this year's main budget was a super budget, uh, nearly 100 and uh, 608 trillion won, and it passed the National Assembly in early December, so less than two months ago. Mm-hmm. Now, frankly, if they had compensation in mind, they could have made it a part of the main budget very, very easily. Um, and this super budget of 608 billion, uh, 8 trillion won is actually uh, roughly similar to the main budget plus the supplementary budget that we had last year. So uh, mm-hmm. The question is, uh, why are they adding so much money so quickly? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, they are saying that we have extra tax revenue so yeah. we can afford this. But what if there's an unexpected loss mm-hmm. uh, on tax revenues this year? Now, last year, the unexpected gains were mainly due to extra real estate and housing taxes and better than expected exports, which uh, increased corporate taxes beyond the estimate. Mm-hmm. So if the exports do not do well, mm-hmm. or the uh, real estate housing bubble pops this year, mm-hmm. there's a good chance that we'll have less revenues than what we expected. So mm-hmm. we're not really prepared. We're looking at this perhaps too optimistically in terms of tax revenues. Uh, so to run a deficit so early on in the year might not be such a good game plan during such an irregular season of the pandemic. It's not over yet, right? And there are still so many uncertainties in the year. Uh, Professor Yang, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of question is being asked when the where is this money being pulled from? Where are we actually and how are they financing it? The government just reported that it received 60 trillion one more than expected in 2021. But none of that amount is being used for this supplementary budget. Yeah, it's uh, they're financing it through a, uh, additional debt of 11.3 trillion one. Uh, that will make the uh, government debt GDP ratio exceed 50 percent, 50.1 percent to be precise. Mm-hmm. And the reason that they cannot spend the uh, 68 trillion won extra revenue is that actually there's a law saying that you can only spend this money uh, on supplementary budget if it's a national emergency. Uh, uh, this uh, current situation is not classified as a national emergency under uh, the budget laws that the uh, National Assembly had passed. passed. Mm. This money is supposed to be used for reducing the uh, government debt and handing money to regional economies to develop the uh, regional uh, economy. Mm. So uh, that money right now is, in a sense, untouchable. Mm. Uh, I think what the government is planning is that they'll increase the debt now and then pay it back later with that extra revenue, But again, as I stated, uh, there's no guarantee that we will have uh, extra revenue this year. Mm. Uh, And then there is a question of relativity as far as government debt is concerned, uh, rising much faster than expected. But it is below levels of other OECD countries, is it not? Well, uh, 14 trillion won is about 0.7 percent of 2020 GDP. And it is 50 percent is lower than most of the other uh, OECD economies. United States, it's roughly about 100 percent of GDP, the debt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Japan is over 200 percent. But uh, they are, uh, at least financially speaking, much more advanced country than uh, Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if government takes on so much debt that investors lose confidence that the uh, government can uh, uh, continue to pay interest or pay the principal, then they lose confidence in the government and that can lead to a financial crisis. Mm. In cases uh, where Korea borrows the money uh, in dollars from foreign lenders, 
the same case applies, but in addition, Korea must maintain a trade surplus since uh, the interest uh, payment and repayment of principal must be in terms of dollars. Uh, so it's not only the debt to GDP ratio, but also interest rates uh, and the uh, trade, def- uh, trade surplus, which is important. And uh, the interest rate is going up, which means that government's interest burden is likely to go up as well. They have to pay more money in interest. Right. And then the, recently we've seen some reduction in trade surplus. It's not uh, nowhere near dangerous levels as yet. But the uh, debt to GDP ratio has been rising at a very fast pace in the last uh, four or five years even before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Government spending went up in the 9% range uh, before the pandemic, and it actually slowed down a little bit. It only went up by 8% uh, pace uh, during the pandemic. So uh, we're on a path which is basically unsustainable if we keep on at the current speed. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about uh, reducing the speed of the uh, increase in government deficit, uh, preferably to below the uh, economic growth rate. Otherwise, uh, our uh, debt-GDP ratio will continue to blow up. Mm. And that may potentially put us in a dangerous, unsustainable uh, position, as you've said. Uh, Because we're so quickly running out of time, Professor Young, I do want to get to today's second topic. It is slightly promising news, a buzzy IPO for LG Energy Solutions. It has become the largest IPO in Korean history. Limited supply, high demand. I I guess that makes sense. But why was it so big? Okay, well, uh, IPO has become sexy. Uh, it's looked at <laughs> as the uh, opportunity to make a lot of money very quickly. We yeah. had three large IPOs in the past year, uh, and uh, people who bought early uh, did gain money from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, LG Energy Solution is not only the first big IPO of the year, but it's also probably going to be the biggest. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, because interest rate is going up, a lot of people think that stock market will not do well, so they're looking for a stock which will do well even if the interest rate rises. Mm-hmm. And LG Energy Solution seems to fit the bill uh, because, well, it's the second largest uh, battery maker for electronic vehicles. It already has ties with Tesla, GM, and Hyundai. Uh, and uh, it's underpriced compared to the uh, largest battery maker, which is Chinese CATL. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, uh, because the largest battery maker is Chinese, uh, the um, U.S. and European car makers are probably not going to want to buy batteries from them. So they'll turn to the second largest, which is LG energy solutions, so they think it's a good bet for the future. Mm. The fact that it is sexy, I I think it is very alluring, especially when it seems like a need to diversify uh, investment portfolios this year is also a sense of urgency, as you've said. Now, some analysts are actually chiming in saying that it is LG Energy Solutions IPO itself, which is causing the downturn in the stock market. Uh, I do wonder why is that and is it likely? Well, uh, the uh, way that Korean IPO works is that you put money in the subscription uh, fund and how much actual stock you get uh, depends on how much money it's in that fund. Uh, now, uh, right now, the, uh, there's much more demand than supply. Uh, so the uh, more money you put in the fund, the more number of stocks you get. But even if you put in 100 million won in the uh, subscription fund, chances are, depending on which security companies you use, you're only going to get about six or seven stock at 300,000 won each. So you're going to get that money back anyway. But as I said, LG Energy Solution is seen as a special stock that can resist uh, the rise in interest rates. Mm. So even if you get the uh, money back, the investors may prefer to put that money in cash, bank account, or uh, in bonds rather than stocks because they uh, feel that the uh, stock market is not going to do very well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it absorbed a lot of money from the stock market, but whether it will go back to the stock market, that's a question. And there's a lot of money involved, at least 114 trillion won. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much, Professor Yang, for this morning, uh, this morning's coverage. That was quite a lot to uh, take on. Uh, hope you're having a good start to your Monday. We'll speak to you again soon. See you next. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. 
See you bright and early on Good Morning Soul.